I'm gonna show you how to create an awesome grunge style t-shirt from your logo in just a few easy steps. Hey guys, Rob Alden here, IMX Productions, and welcome to a brand new tutorial from IMX Video and Design, and let's get right to it. So we're gonna start here with uh, a blue canvas because we're gonna print this onto a uh, navy blue shirt. So always wanna start with the color of the shirt you intend to print on. You can always change it, but it's a good way to start. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste in my shirt design right here. This is IMX Action Addicts, a brand new channel by IMX, so you can check that out in the corner and uh, be notified when we start uh, loading some awesome content. Okay, we're going to put that into a group and then we're going to add a mask to that group. We can then add this awesome little grunge texture here. You can download that from the website and hit Option or Alt and click on the uh, group layer to open it. We can then paste in that design and let's see what that looks like. Okay, let's invert it. So hit Command Control I to invert. Now, as we all know, uh, I've said this before, the way that masks work in Photoshop is they're monochromatic, so they're only shades of gray, and whatever's black is transparent, whatever's white is, vis is visible. So that allows you to add some, add some style to your uh, logo by masking out certain elements. We're going to go back to the mask layer, hit Command and Control M for curves, and we're just going to up the contrast because we don't want any shades of gray. We want just black, black and white. So just make sure, try to remove all shades of gray and keep just the black and white to really accentuate those scratches. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some brushing. If you've seen our last tutorial, uh, we recreated the Swamp Thing logo, and we're actually going to use a lot of the same techniques we use there, same brushes actually. And so check that out. Uh, and all the brushes, all the files I'm using will be available on the blog post. So click below and get those files. Okay, so grab our brush and we're gonna go grab that same light, those same lightning brushes we used in the Swamp Thing logo. So there it is, hit okay. And we're gonna go over to brush settings and we're gonna add a few dynamics. So uh, first grab that lightning brush, pick one of them as a couple. I like that one. So shape dynamic, we're gonna add a bit of size jitter. So every time we brush, it's going to be a little smaller or bigger, and we're going to add some angle jitter. So every time we brush, the angle is going to be different. So we're adding some randomness to our brushing, essentially. Okay, so remember to have your mask selected. We're painting black because we want to remove, and 100% opacity, and just start clicking through. Now what I like to do here is I keep my finger poised on um, on Command Z, Command or Control Z for undo. So if you, you do a brush that you don't like, simply click undo and keep going. And I'm going to fast forward here and just because I spent a little bit of time doing these brushes, um, this is really comes down to preference and you can spend as little or as much time as you want on this portion. When we're done brushing, we're going to go back to the mask layer, hit command control M for curves. And once again, uh, remove that contrast or up the contrast so that we remove all grayscale and just stick to black and white because that's all we want. Now we're going to add some additional styling around. So we want some color, some of that match to that color. I'm going to add a new layer, put it above my, my logo layer, logo group, and I'm going to uh, go and grab that orange color. We could just brush in here, but instead what we're going to do is we're going to fill the whole layer orange, add a mask, fill that mask black. And now we're going to use our brush to brush in, do the opposite of what we just did. So white color instead of black, and we're going to brush in where we want uh, some of that layer to appear. So there we go. So I'm brushing some of those lightning brushes here around the orange layer just to add some, again, some grunge, some style. Just make it look really cool. Fast forwarding again, I'm switching brushes. I'm actually going between my lightning brush and a ink splatters. And don't forget, so we're brushing and we're also going into the mask and removing the grayscale, removing, upping the contrast so we're only getting black and white in that. We're gonna do the same thing with the blue layer. So we've created a blue layer, we've added a mask, and now we're brushing. So exactly the same thing, we're gonna brush around, grab a brush. So these are simple techniques that you can do with any logo, and there we go, pretty cool. Okay. Last thing we can do is we can hit command and control on the layer and that's going to select the layer. We're then going to create a new layer and fill black. So we've created a black logo, essentially a black version of our logo. We're going to put it behind our logo and using our arrow keys, we're going to just move it slightly off center, creating kind of a drop shadow effect. 
So as you can see now, we've got a little drop shadow behind our logo. This basically just accentuates the original logo, so it really pops and stands out. What I like to do at this point is usually uh, take all of our design files, duplicate them, merge them, hit a command control E to merge, and then take the original, put them in a folder. So I've got the original files, but I also have a one layer of my logo. And now at this point, so here's our logo in one file, in one layer, one file. Uh, you, this is the file that you would save as and send to print. So if you're sending to, if your printers accept raster files, save it as a PNG because PNG supports transparency and send them that PNG file. Um, if you are printing vector, you require an EPS file. Therefore, you can take that file. We'll need, we'll need to convert it to vector. I've got a video that shows you exactly how to do that. So go check that out. This, this design would work really well because it's three solid colors. Uh, we've got the orange, we've got the blue, we've got the black. There's no shades in there. That's why we took care not to make shades that we could convert it to vector should we have to. And the last thing I like to do is if you're, you know, especially if you're selling this t-shirt online, you'll want to create some sort of a mock-up. Um, so let's go grab a mock-up. Here we go. Uh, if you want to download mock-ups like this, go to the website. We've got plenty of mock-ups, so go go there. They're all re ready to go, easy to easy to use. So we're going to switch the color here. So the color of the shirt, I want it to be blue. So let's, there we go, blue navy blue shirt. And then we come into the placeholder smart object, paste our logo, bring it up, uh, hide the back, center it a little bit, and hit save, and close the smart object. There it is. All we got to do now is match the shading layer, re, uh, delete the mask and add a new mask that matches our new logo, our new design. And there we go. And there's the logo. There's the file. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial. Um, it's just that simple. We, we like literally three, four steps uh, to create an awesome grunge style t-shirt. So paste your logo in, uh, give, give it a mask, put some textures and some brushes to kind of add some style and then use those same brushes to add some ink blotches and scratches around your logo, creating a really awesome, uh, really awesome t-shirt design. And this looks better than any plain t-shirt with a plain logo on it. This looks so much better. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, comment below, please let me, let me know what you thought of the tutorial, what you would like to see in future tutorials. Um, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell and check out. We've got new channels, uh, IMAX's new channels. We've got Instagram pages with lots of awesome content. All that is linked below and we will see you next time. Cheers.